After a disappointing year so far, Pascal Ackerman has been left off the Bora Hansgrohe Tour de France team with Wilco Kelderman and Peter Sagan to lead Bora Hansgrohe. Here's their team, and I mean, that's enough to make a sponsor's blood run cold seeing, you know, Wilco Kelderman leading the team for GC. They've got a combo of Conrad and Kelderman, I think, for the mountains. Buchmann was injured after the crash in the Giro d'Italia. I think he's going for stages. And we'll get to Ackerman and Sagan and the power data and Ackerman's season so far in a second. But I just wanted to make this point because it made me laugh. In the Radsport article from Felix Mattis, Denk was quoted as saying, Conrad will get freedom, but he'll also support Kelderman in the mountains. And we saw this two weeks ago at the Criterium de Dauphiné, where on stage six, Conrad took four bonus seconds away from Kelderman, who finished fourth behind him. Then Thomas crashed on stage eight, four seconds ahead of Kelderman on GC. Kelderman then in virtual third marked Haig Road really defensively. They had Conrad up the road for no reason, I think riding for his own top 10 on GC. And then Thomas came back and protected his third on GC with Kelderman missing out on the podium GC by four seconds. So I can't wait to see how that plays out in the Tour de France but from my perspective, from what I imagine is the Bora Hansgrohe management's perspective and their sponsor's perspective. Taking Peter Sagan without having a sprint train and Ackerman to the Tour de France makes the most sense because you've got a choice really. You've got Ackerman maybe going for a stage and probably leaving at the end of his contract. And on the other hand, Sagan might also win a stage, might also leave at the end of the year, but he's also a big contender for the green jersey. And if you've got Ackerman contending for sprints, you're going to have to bring Selig, Schwarzman, Lars, or some lead out riders for Ackerman. Sagan doesn't need them because he can look after himself in the sprints, as we saw when he won in the Giro d'Italia this year, Romandy, and Catalonia. And if you bring Ackerman, well, you either get Sagan to lead him out, which costs his green jersey chances or you sort of have them sprinting for their own ambitions at the same time which could be a mess and without having to bring Ackerman's lead out train Bora can bring riders like Perstelberger who just won a stage at the Criterium de Dauphiné from a break Ida Schelling who just won his first pro race very strong more versatile riders who can get into breaks and helps again in the green jersey but Pascal Ackerman's not happy he gave some comments to Radsport to Felix Mattis as well he said when he signed his current contract he was told that he would ride the tour this year in 2021 without this promise he would would not have signed the contract at the time. Well, I've got to say that's his agent's fault for not getting that as a clause in the contract. If it ain't in the contract, it's not a real promise. But this happened last year when he got taken out of the Tour de France team because apparently last year, well, there weren't enough sprint stages. So he went to the Vuelta España and he won a couple of stages. Well, this year, there are like six to eight sprint stages, assuming breaks don't win those stages. The first two stages have maximum green jersey points at the finish. Sagan will be going for those green jersey points, particularly in the first stage. So despite the really bunch sprint heavy parkour this year, Danks told him, you're not going to the results not being good enough this year. And to me, it wasn't a massive surprise. Sagan was always going and they've only done one stage race together. That was Paranese last year. You might remember my video on ITV Sport, which linked down below. Stage two of Paranese, where Sagan had incredible legs. He pretty much initiated a split, then led out for Pascal Ackerman, who got beaten by Giacomo Nizzolo in stage two. Well, one of the interesting things Ackerman said to Radsport was that you can see from his data, according to him, that his form is not the issue. Denk and the team know that too which suggests, and we're going to take a look at his race footage now, that he thinks the lead out has been the problem. This is UAE Tour, I think stage four, pure bunch sprint. You can see him here, second wheel, but the problem is there's 500 meters to go. Bennett still has Merku behind about fourth wheel. Ackerman's got case ball and it's all on his wheel. And you compare that to, say, at Paris-Nice when Quickstep did a perfect lead out. Merku took over at 500 meters, whereas Ackerman's lead out man's already been pedaling for 150 meters. Contrasted as well as to the late move of Alperson for Jonas Rickard in Shelter Place. I've not seen the Bora train perform as well as, say, the Alperson train or, of course, Merku this year. Maybe that's what Ackerman is referring to. I think he had Martin Lars leading him out at UAE Tour, and he gets dropped off with about oh, 250 meters to go around this bend, maybe even 270 meters, and that's really, really early to start his kick, especially with Nizzolo on the wheel and Bennett and Ewan still waiting in the wings. So he had good numbers. I'm sure Ackerman had really good numbers in this sprint, although he didn't put up the Strava file for this, but he just peters out, got dropped off too early, and Bennett wins. And it's even more obvious from the overhead shot. So maybe that's what Ackerman is referring to, and he won a stage in the UAE Tour stage one uh, in 2020 ahead of some of the premium sprinters. His numbers there were about 1,250 watts 
for 15 seconds with around the 1500 watt peak. But continuing on with the train of thought that maybe Ackerman's not happy with his lead out. This is the shoulder praise. This was a disaster for Bora Hansgrove. They had, I think, five riders in this reduced group competing against Cavendish and Sam Bennett, who also stuffed it up to Koenig Quickstep. But Ackerman's got two riders in front of him. I think Pollitt was already tired from working hard to actually keep the gap to the riders behind them. And Bora gets shut off on the right-hand side, trying to follow Ajid's uh, Citroen. And then it pretty much peters out. They're not able to bring Ackerman up. Despite having him third wheel, they're in good position. They're in the draft right now. They should be trying to bring him up to the right-hand side of Ejder's uh, Citroen to prevent them being shut out. Dries de Bond for Alperson is trying to do that very thing right now. And you can see that Alperson was still behind Bora Hansgrohe at this point. Ackerman moves over to the left-hand side, gives up on his lead-out train, and sort of just floats in the middle. He isn't able to fight for wheels particularly well, and we'll look at that in a second in some of the other footage. And you can see the contrast here. Alperson bringing up with the Bont and Ricard Jasper Philipson really late, whilst Ackerman is sort of floating in no man's land about 12th wheel. And that was pretty much Shelder Price chances over for Pascal Ackerman. No matter what numbers he could do, the best numbers ever, you can see how angry Bora were. This is with like 200 meters to go. They already knew they'd stuffed it. So I wouldn't really say that was Ackerman's fault per se. He didn't fight for wheels particularly well after his lead out train got shut out on the right hand side, but nor did they bring him up and give him an armchair ride to 160 to go like Alperson did for Jasper Philipson beating Bennett and Cavendish second and third. So yes, there's been issues with Ackerman's lead out as well as Selig and other members of the lead out were injured earlier in the year, so that didn't help matters. Unfortunately, Ackerman doesn't put up all his files on a lot of the UAE Tour and Paranese sprints, which he didn't do well in. He hasn't put up those files. He did put up the Elfstead and Ronda from a, a couple of weeks ago, which I think he would have been happy with. He did 1,228 watts for 15 seconds, 1,460 peak. Giro stage two, 2019, which he won ahead of Ewan, 1500 peak, 1217 watts for 15 seconds, although a higher speed sprint. UAE stage one, 2020, where he beat good competition, 1080 watts for 15 seconds, although a very high speed sprint, 1460 peak. Vuelta stage nine last year, where he came second to Bennett on the road, but he won the stage, he was competitive, 1360 for nine seconds, 1500 peak. The Madrid stage that he won in the Vuelta, fair and square, 1230 for 10 seconds. So his Elfsted and Ronda numbers are good. And if you look there, his lead out kind of cost him there as well. They flicked him and didn't bring him up at all. He had to close gaps himself. So maybe that's why Ackerman's saying, well, my form is coming good because, I mean, and like the video down below if you do like this analysis, quite a detailed video on Pascal Ackerman, but this is Parry Nice, I think stage one, the one Bennett absolutely dominated. He got a pretty good lead out, I thought. It's a slight uphill drag, so you don't want to go at, say, 200, but he gets dropped off with about 175 meters to go, maybe 150. DeMar's been sprinting for ages, and he comes out of the wheel and he gets back in the saddle in less than five seconds. And you, you can't tell me that he did 1250 for 15 seconds there. There's no way he did. He clearly ran out of steam and his shape was not good in that sprint. You go back to the UAE tour this year as well, some of the pure sprints. Martin Lars was doing the lead outs and I think he did a reasonable job. You see Ackerman third wheel, he's behind Mercu and Bennett and he just gets squeezed backwards. David Decker basically comes around and pushes him off Sam Bennett's wheel. Viviani does as well. So then Ackerman does, and he's been re relegated a couple of times for this now. He does a huge swing to his left-hand side trying to find open space, but really early. Merku hasn't finished his lead out yet. I think nearly chops Bauhaus, but it also affects Ackerman's momentum. He has to stop pedaling, get back up to speed into Decker's wheel. So again, Maybe his numbers were really good here, but the positioning was bad, the timing was bad, and given the way Viviani was able to finish so strongly off Bennett's slipstream, if he'd followed Bennett, you'd think he would have done a little bit better. You can see how deep he has to come, and he's already been sprinting for like five to six seconds at this point because he was out of position, whereas Bennett comes off Mercu with like 150 to go and it's lights out. Well, let's move on to the next stage where I think Martin Lars did a pretty good job as well. You see him in the middle here. He's got Ackerman right on his wheel. You've got the Boist, Kluger, and Ewan to their right-hand side. Mercu's bringing up Sam Bennett from deep and Ewan and Lotto got it right this stage, but suddenly Ackerman's lost Martin Lars's wheel. And I can't see the overhead. I didn't get the footage, but he's just lost Martin Lars' wheel. And you see that 
then it keeps winning because he sticks to Merku's wheel like absolute glue. Now Ackerman's having to come from really deep whilst Bennett's being brought up with speed by Merku. Ewan latches onto that and Ackerman's pretty much toast. He's boxed in, he's already had to sprint to fight for position and Ewan wins this stage. So even when he does have good legs, the positioning's been a massive problem. Parini stage five, absolutely killer lead out from De Kearney. Quick step, they had Merku drop Bennett off with like 170 meters to go with a tailwind. Ackerman's sixth wheel, he's on Christoph's wheel, and right now is when he should be trying to take Bennett's wheel. And you see that's what other riders are doing. I think Hausler brings up Bauhaus. Everyone wants to get onto Bennett's wheel. And Ackerman's not pedaling at this point. And he basically loses the opportunity to take Bennett's wheel off Christoph, which was there for the taking for sure. He gets squeezed then by DeMar's lead out train and he's gone back. He's now gone from fourth wheel with the opportunity to go onto Bennett's wheel back to 10th wheel. He's now trying to move up the right hand side with Christoph. And here the sprint starts to go away from him. Merku starts to launch with 485 to go with Bennett on his wheel tailwind. He's got to try and follow Bauhaus. He's boxed into the left-hand side and you're now going to see him do the big swing to the left-hand side to try and find space. You see him shift dead and call out to his left-hand side. He keeps doing this. He did in Shelter Price 2020, got relegated. Did it recently, got relegated. And now it's 300 meters to go and he's having to kick into the air, trying to get back whilst Bennett still is in the slipstream of Merku and kicks with 175 meters to go. So you can't win sprints from that position. I'm sure Ackerman, given where he finished, did excellent power numbers in this sprint. I don't doubt it, but at this level and certainly at the Tour de France coming up, if you're having to restart momentum from eighth, 10th wheel after sprinting already for six seconds and then having to sprint a second time, you're very unlikely to be winning or even coming second or third in stages. I think the moral of the story is a lot of teams would be happy to take Pascal Ackerman to the Tour de France I think he's capable of winning a stage, particularly if Bennett's not able to compete. The problem is, if you're on the same team as Peter Sagan, there is limited space for you and your sprint train in that team. And it's also a note of caution for Bennett or a sprinter, maybe thinking of going back to Bora Hansgrohe, wait to see if they re-sign Peter Sagan or not, because if they do, and you want to go to the biggest race in the world to compete for sprint victories, there's going to be limited room for you unless you're truly top class. But I'd be keen to hear your thoughts down below. Do you think it's just a business and performance no-brainer for Bora Hansgrohe to leave Ackerman off the start list for the Tour de France, and he's not helped himself by not winning any races this year? Do you think his level's roughly the same, but he's just been competing against stronger competition and unlucky and had bad leadouts this year? But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did, or subscribe to the channel as well. It helps the channel out a lot. I'm really enjoying making these Tour de France preview videos. Hopefully there's some drama with De Koenig if they're bringing Cavendish or not. I've got that video locked and loaded. But until then, ciao.